Hello, Bellum here with a screencast on Quizlet and Quizlet Live. Uh, Quizlet is a free and collaborative website for teachers and students, and you can either make or find your own flashcards, which can be as interactive as you choose. So we're going to start out at Quizlet.com. And I originally signed up with my, I did the uh, sign in with Google and it showed me that apparently with some old version of an account I had that I could not do Quizlet Live. So if you're interested in doing Quizlet Live, I would highly suggest for you to sign up again and to do sign up with email. And then ignore all this top stuff. I actually went through and did birthday, username, email, password, blah, blah, blah. And that ended up working better. So I'll show you. Um, it'll end up asking for your username and password. And it, it does end up looking a little different. You're able to do live. So I'll give you an example here. Study sets. I made this one. And this button right here is what was missing before when I signed in with Google. So if you're having trouble and you're finding like I did that it keeps asking you to upgrade, you shouldn't have to pay for this. I had to set up a new account to be able to do live. So anyway, you get into Quizlet. What is Quizlet? What am I doing with this? You are making a bunch of different fun ways for your kids to review information, for them to practice. And uh, they can make their own sets, you can make your own sets, or you can search for sets. So I'm pretending to be a Spanish teacher right now. I'm going to search for Spanish and see what comes up. So I have animals, I have, looks like travel words, and you could put in a specific kind of question sets. I'm going to try going to this first one here. And now I am looking at their set. They have a bunch of different words here. If I like this set and I want to use it, I can add it. And then I already have one course here. If you haven't already set up a course, you can go ahead and create a course for yourself. Give it an hour if you want. And then it's going to default that your students can add study sets to your class and they can add other kids to your class. You probably don't want that. So I would suggest turning that off. And it'll ask you to select a school if you haven't already done that. So now I have two classes. Here's that Spanish list that I added. And the nice thing now that I have this list here, I can do a bunch of things with it. I can have the kids just do flashcards. I can have them learn it where it's going to show it to them with the definition. And you can see it gave me an answer here and then different parts. So they can listen to it. If you're doing something for language, you can record yourself talking. And then it'll have you give the next one. And you can see I'm doing Spanish here. It's allowing me to do the accents, which is really nice. And again, the masculine and the feminine form. So anyway, that is one choice. There are other choices here where they have to spell it. You can make them take a test. There's a gravity game. And then, of course, we'll get to live in a little bit. So say you don't want to find an existing set of questions. You can actually make your own. All right, so I will say I was looking for animal words and I didn't find one I like. So I'm going to make my own. And then you'll tell it what you want to have first. We'll say I'm going to do English words first. And then one of the coolest parts here is when you switch, you can tell it what the language is, and then it'll give you your accents if you need it. And then over here, there's a little image. And you can see it just auto automatically searched what I had picked, and I could put in a little hint word. If you are a language teacher, you want to make you maybe want to consider paying for the upgrade, which I think might be forty nine a year, and then you can record yourself so they can listen to the correct pronunciation. So that one's done. And again, it's looking for dog automatically. And then I need an accent. There we go.
So I've just made a question set of five questions. If you decide you want to play games and go live, you have to have at least 12 question sets. And then when you're done, you click Create. So now I have this question set. I can add it right into my classes, or say I want to give just the, I could copy and paste just that one to the class. I'm going to go ahead and add it to my Bellum Hour 1 course. And then I could add it to another course if I have multiple courses. And then I am done. So uh, I'm going to go to my list of questions, which is over here. And I do have a set of food words that has 12 terms. So uh, let me make sure that I've gotten through everything here. We did create a class. We searched for study sets. Oh, the sharing step. I don't think I showed you this. So I'm back in my main class hub. And uh, say I want my students to uh, join my class. I can click on my course there. And then here in the members, I can give them the URL to join. And then if I don't want them to have to go to this link, I can click on Add Members, and I can type in their emails. And then when you're done, you will see everybody in your members list as they join. So that's how you can share your course with your students so that they can join. And then we are going to switch over here, and I'll show you how to do Quizlet Live. So again, uh, here are all the different kinds that they can do by themselves. Quizlet Live is a new feature, and Naomi Simon has piloted it for teachers who are interested. If you would like to try it out with me, you can uh, come up. You do need to have at least six students to play. And I will tell you right now, I have an iPhone, two iPads, a Samsung tablet, a Chromebook, and a regular old computer all signed into Quizlet Live. And so you can literally play it on anything. It's taking your card deck and basically turning it into a game. So uh, the difference of Quizlet Live from like something, say, Kahoot, is it's pre-made material. You already have these questions and, and flip cards in there. Why not just turn it into a fun game? And Quizlet, every kid is participating in the same question, and they see all the answers, and they basically pick multiple choice. Quizlet Live, on the other hand, uh, the groups are auto-sorted, and you can tweak them if you want to. And then after the question is given, each of the members of the group has a different answer, and they have to figure out who has the correct answer. And if somebody picks the wrong answer, they lose a point. So I'm going to show you how to get to your set to get it going here. So again, uh, if you go to your study sets, and then it has to have at least 12 terms. This one does. So I'm going to click on Food Words. And then this new live button here is the one you want to give out. There's a demo tour you can watch if you want to. Otherwise, you just click Create Game. And it's going to pop up your join code, which I'm going to pause for a minute here and get the students in. Actually, I think I already have it going on another window here. Yep. So uh, I gave this code to the students. They literally just go to quizlet.com backslash live, or they can go to quizlet.live. They type in their code. It'll ask them for their name, so stressing to the students that we don't want them to put a fake name in. So say somebody puts in a name that's not real, you could remove the student. And I have all six of my devices logged in, so I'm going to pretend to be six students. So I'm going to click Create Game, which is going to put them on teams of three and three. It's going to give them random animals here, and if you don't like the way it turned out, you can shuffle teams. You can keep shuffling until I'm happy with the arrangement. And then when I'm ready, I can click Start Game. Oops, somebody just got disconnected. Let me pause and see if I can figure that out. All right, and you can see uh, getting all the students on is probably going to be your... Oh, there we go. We've got all six players on. So if you're having a kid that's got a slow device and you're continually waiting for them, you could have them swap out for a different device. So um, right now, the question that came up for the students that uh, you can't see on your device is they're all being asked a different question. And one of them says, do you have the match for chicken? So I have to look on my team and see if I can find the match for chicken, which is pollo. So I found that on the chameleons team and the kid who had it had to click it and you can see the chameleons just got a point for finding it. The other team have the word banana up. So I have my three players on the um, 
Puma's team that are now looking for banana, which is platano, and they just clicked it. So on your screen, you are not seeing what the students are being asked. So they themselves have to be figuring out what is what. And let's see if I can get over here and click it. And let's see, the Pumas team is now being asked for carrot. So I am looking for zanahoria, which I will click. And now they're caught up and tied. And now the other team is being asked for strawberry. And in a real-time situation, both teams would be doing uh, this at the same time. So their scores would be going up much faster than this. It ends up being a speed race. But since it's just me on six devices, that's obviously not working as well. I'm going to show you what happens when they get one wrong. Uh, the word is strawberry, and I'm clicking helado, which is ice cream. So, oh, there's just lit up red because the kid put the wrong one up. And they had a pop-up on their screen saying, what you picked is incorrect, and here's the new answer. So their score went back down to zero. So every time you screw up, your team then has to go back to the beginning, and you can see now we're starting over and they have a different answer. All right, so the Pumas now are going for, uh, they have chicken, and I'm going to see if I can finish this game quick so you can see what it looks like when you do actually win the game. All right, we have bread, which is pond. Oh, and I just lost a kid. I'm going to refresh here. I gave them an option to rejoin the game they were in, which is good because they actually had the correct answer. So there we go. Pumas are pulling ahead here. They now have ham. Oh, jamon, that same kid that was disconnected had it. Now they're being asked for potatoes, papas. And chameleons are still stuck there with cake, which I'm going to pick the wrong one and send them back to zero again. Uh, eggs, huevos. We're still going. Strawberry, fresa. They've got just a few left. Ice cream, helado. And now this one player, all of their answers have been picked so that they would now go to another team and, or another team member and help them. Cake is pastel. Oh, they're so close. Lettuce, lechuga. And so you can see, since you can't see on the screen what they're playing, you would want to be circulating as the teacher to see how they're doing. And there it tells you they finished the game. They were the first ones. And then you'll have a click continue to see stats. And you'll get a what we learned question that will pop up and say, okay, this is what people picked. And then that would be a good learning topic for you as a teacher to say, uh, these are some things we might want to study that people are getting wrong. Here's another one. People said helado for ice cream. And these are the ones that people picked that instead. What we should study. So it's going to give them a little list and then they could use that for their studying. And then it'll go through the what we know. Yep, you got potatoes right. You got lettuce right. You got cheese right. So it's really interactive and quick. I, I didn't have to do anything other than click go live and then wait for the kids to log in. And again, you could play again if you want. The kids usually get really into it. It's high, pay, high uh, action, fast paced. So you could keep playing that over and over again for the kids if you want to. And then when you're done, you just do exit game. So there we've covered flashcards, we've covered making sets, we've covered how to go live. And uh, if you ever want to do what we just did and test it out, I do have five iPads in the Media Center, plus yours would make six. So if you want to test it out with just us teachers so you can literally see how it works, we can definitely do that. Otherwise, if you want to try it with students and they already have devices, I would be happy to show up and walk you through the live portion right then and there. All right, so hopefully you learned a lot, and uh, come find me if you need any help. Thanks for watching.